the essential commodities amendment act okay so this is the third law okay the first one is regarding the freedom of the farmers to for trade and commerce farmers produce trade and commerce law the second one is regarding the contract farming law and third is the essential commodities amendment act so these three laws is is one of the most important reforms taken by the central government in the last few decades and as i already discussed this three laws is considered to be the 1991 moment for agriculture okay so we will discuss in detail regarding this amendment essential commodities amendment what are the advantages or what are the benefits of this advancement amendment what are the major criticism against this amendment and what are the solutions or way forward okay now before discussing this uh, amendment okay have an idea why this law have been put in place by the government way back in 1955 okay so the we will first have an idea regarding the history of this law and why this law was amended in recently in 2020 okay so the in 1955 you have to understand the situation okay 1950s or 1955 time period okay uh, the, that was a period of greater food shortage okay we were mainly a food importing uh, country so in order to uh, prevent uh, hoarding and black marketing this law was enacted okay so so this law was enacted in 1955 at a time when the country was having a shortage of food and there was low level of uh, food grain production so we were uh, depend on imports and we used to get uh, uh, many assistance food assistance to feed the population in the 1950s okay so the you keep this is a very very important point okay the main objective of this law is to prevent hoarding and black marketing of foodstuffs okay but things have changed okay over especially after the green revolution other things if you look into the current system okay our food grain production okay in the case of wheat there have been 10 times increase in the production of wheat when you compare with the 1950s and in the present context there have been nearly four times increase in the rice production uh, more than so there have been increase in the production in the case of pulses etc okay so from a food deficit country shortage country now we are a food surplus country and we are main exporters of many food, uh, agricultural products okay so currently what has happened is okay from so this law from being a protector how now become a hurdle for private investment in many storage facilities etc okay so what this law will do is if a particular commodity is placed under this law then the central government can control its production its supply and its distribution as well as it can control it can impose a stock limit this is the biggest concern okay this is the biggest concern of this law it will impose a stock limit so whoever is keeping a stock of a particular agricultural product which is placed under the essential commodities act and if they are they will be considered so if they are having stock beyond the stock limit what will happen the law will penalize them it will be there will be penalty as well as punishment for those people who are holding beyond the stock limit because of this restriction of this uh, stock limit order many private sector private sector investment in cold storages in warehousing facilities have been very less coming okay so our especially in relation to perishable goods we lack necessary or sufficient uh, storage facilities and this has resulted in for uh, our agricultural product being wastage okay there is a huge agricultural food wastage is happening in india so in order to and also by having a proper storage facility 
by having a proper storage facility when the prices of agricultural pro product is less the farmers if there is proper storage facilities there they can keep for some time and when the price improves they can sell so lack of storage facility resulted in lower income for the farmers as well as it has resulted in agricultural wastage okay so the basic aim of this amendment is to rectify this problem okay so that you need to keep in mind what is this law and what is the background why the government want to make this amendment okay now before going to this i just want to discuss okay regarding the a detailed explanation regarding the this law so this will be helpful for your prelims also okay so they can ask you okay which all commodities are mentioned in the essential commodities etc okay so in in prelims they ask whether this essential commodity is defined by this law or not so be very clear this uh, essential commodity is there is no specific definition of this what is an essential commodity in the uh, in this law so there is no specific definition what it says that what it says that essential commodity means a commodity specified in the schedule of this law okay there are there is a schedule so which all commodities mentioned in the schedule of this law they are essential commodities once a commodity is being put in the schedule of this law then the central government have the power to regulate that particular commodity and central government also have the power to add or remove a commodity in the schedule okay again a current affair regarding this once the government announced this lockdown due to this uh, covid epidemic okay uh, mask and uh, sanitizer were included in this essential commodity because there was short initially there was shortage but once the supply improved the government removed mask and sanitizer from the essential commodity list this is from your prelims point of view okay now so coming to the uh, okay so be very clear these points will be very much helpful for you okay so the sender has the power to add or remove an uh, item from this essential commodity list okay so sender if it is satisfied that under public interest it can notify an item as essential in consultation with the state government now according to the ministry of consumer uh, affairs food and public distribution again a prelims point ministry of consumer affairs food and public distribution is the ministry which implements this law they can ask which ministry implements this essential commodities act it is ministry of consumer affairs food and public distribution okay according to the ministry currently there are seven commodities currently there are seven group of categories or commodities is mentioned in this schedule of the essential commodities act they are first one is drugs second one is fertilizers whether inorganic organic or mixed third one is food stuff so in this food stuff only included all the agricultural products including edible oils then hang yarn made wholly from cotton petroleum and petroleum products raw jute and jute textile and finally the seeds seeds include of food crop seeds of fruits and vegetables seeds of cattle fodder jute seed cotton seed etc so these are the seven commodities mentioned in the essential commodities act as essential so this can be helpful for your prelims they can ask which all items are included in the essential commodities act okay so by declaring this is the from the mains point of view this is the most important point okay by declaring a commodity as essential by declaring a commodity as essential the government can control the production supply and distribution of that commodity as well as they can impose a stock limit this is the important point to note down okay i told you this is the reason why this imposing of stock limit is the biggest prob hurdle for investment in the storage facilities okay so the 2020 amendment what the recent amendment have done okay what this 2020 amendment have done to this essential commodities act okay so it has deregulated okay so the essential commodities amendment act have deregulated commodities such as cereals so cereals is now cereals pulses oil seeds edible oils onion and potato will now be a deregulated commodity they will not be regulated under this law they are deregulated 
okay so they have done it by i mean by introducing a new subsection from the mains point of view these section are not important but just have an idea they have introduced a new subsection in section 3 okay uh, subsection 1a in section 3 after the amendment it says that the supply of certain food stuffs like cereals pulses oil seed edible oil onion and potato can be regulated only they are not fully deregulated be very careful okay they can so normally it is de, uh, deregulated under normal circumstances they are deregulated but under extraordinary circumstances they will be regulated so what are the circumstances in which these commodities can be regulated they are the extraordinary circumstances are extraordinary price rise extraordinary price rise war famine and natural cal calamity of a severe nature only under these conditions these commodities can be regulated under the essential commodities act otherwise these commodities should not be regulated by the government okay so this is the amendment 2020 amendment for this law okay so so what they have done is that they have taken these items from the purview of this law so that the central government will not control the its production supply distribution or even imposing stock limit okay so in the earlier situation it was not clearly mentioned under the law and uh, the the reason for invoking this section was not specified in the earlier law but now it is clearly mentioned on on what circumstances these commodities can be regulated only in these circumstances only extraordinary circumstances only this commodities can be regula regulated otherwise they should not be regulated and this decision of the government will attract more investment in storage and other related facilities for these agricultural commodities so along with this amendment and the other two laws which we have discussed will help in increase in private investment and thereby increase in the production of these commodities so the amendment also says that this 2020 amendment also says that okay the government order for regulating the stock limit shall not apply to a processor here food processor so the order for regulating stock limit shall not apply to a process or a value chain participant value chain participant from the starting point to the ending point okay value chain is nothing but from the farm gate to the consumer if which all intermediary is there they are part of value chain okay so this reg order regulating stock limit shall not apply to a processor or value chain participant of any agricultural produce if the stock limit if the stock limit of such person does not exceed the overall ceiling of installed capacity of the processing unit okay see every food processing unit will be having a storage capacity okay and if the stock limit is does not exceeding the installed capacity of the processing facility that stock limit if the government have come with an order that will not be applicable to the food processing unit so this is actually this initiative will promote more food processing units because even an order is there that will not be applicable to food processing unit provided they are not holding beyond their uh, ceiling facility overall ceiling installed capacity okay and also and also in the case of in order to promote export if the exporter is having demand order for export of that particular product and he has purchased it for that particular demand and he, and suddenly a stock order has come it will not be applicable to the exporter also so these are the reforms been taken so that is to promote this amendment is basically to promote the food processing units as well as to promote agricultural export so that the stock limit will not be applicable to them now regarding the stock limit okay regarding the stock limit on what conditions okay on what conditions the stock limit the government can impose okay so earlier that was not clear it was not earlier law have not mentioned on what conditions the stock limit can be imposed but now the amendment is clearly mentioning on what conditions the government can impose stock limit okay so the earlier act did not provide a clear framework to impose stock limit but the amended act okay this word is very important the amended act provides for a price trigger okay so the amended act 
provides for a price trigger. Okay, we'll discuss what is this price trigger. Okay, so, so it says that this agricultural foodstuffs can only be regulated under extra or they can they can be only be regulated under extraordinary circumstances that we know that is war, famine, extraordinary price rise, and natural calamity. Okay, so this keyword extraordinary price rise is the issue. Okay, so any action on imposing stock limit will be based on the price trigger. So there, the word is extraordinary price rise. So this extraordinary price rise or the price trigger, the price trigger is clearly explained in the amendment, 2020 amendment. What is this price trigger? So there is for hortical, for horticultural produce, there is a price trigger is there and for other agricultural food stuff, there is a different price trigger is there. The for horticultural produce, try to understand horticultural produce, have one, they are mainly perishables, okay, perishable commodity, okay. So for, in the case of horticultural produce, a hundred percentage increase, okay, a hundred percentage for horticultural produce, hundred percentage increase in the retail price, be very clear, okay, hundred percentage increase in the retail price, hundred percentage increase in the retail price of a commodity over the immediately preceding 12 months that is if the so compared to the previous year immediately preceding 12 months the preceding one year if the price rises 100 percentage increase to the previous one year automatically the price trigger will apply okay so if there is an increase 100 percentage increase in the price rise price increase in the price compared to the last year for hortical produce this price trigger will come and then the government can impose stock limit if the increase in the price is 100 percentage increase or it will it says that in the last five years average retail price of the last five years in the average if the average uh, price or retail price of the last five years and if there is increase, 100 percentage increase in the last average price of the last five year, whichever is lower, whichever is lower, okay, last five year average price or the last year price, which one is lower, 100 percentage increase, which one is lower, then the price trigger will happen. And once the price trigger happen, the government can impose stock limit, okay. So, it is clear earlier this clarity was not there when to impose stock limit government simply uh, have many times have used the stock limit and once the government imposed the stock limit once the government imposed the restriction it has continued for a longer period now so the this law amended law is clearly explaining the price trigger okay for horticultural produce it is 100 percentage increase in the price rise for non perishable agricultural foods so, horticultural produce are perishables, okay. For agricultural food stuff, non-perishable agricultural food stuff, the price trigger is 50 percentage increase, okay. For horticultural produce, it is 100 percentage increase in the food price, in the retail price. But for uh, non-perishable agricultural food, uh, food stuff, it is 50 percentage increase in the retail price. Same in the last one year compared to the last one year or the average retail price of the last five years. But the key word is 50 percentage increase. So this can be important for your prelims also. Okay, what is the price trigger? 50 percentage increase in the retail price for non-perishable agricultural food stuff. For horticultural produce, it is 100 percentage increase in the increase in the retail price. And regarding the exemptions from stock holding, okay, this exemptions from stock holding limits, as we already discussed, okay, this stock holding limits. Even during the price trigger, trigger time period, the stock holding limits exemption will be applicable to processors, value chain participants of any agricultural produce as well as orders relating to public distribution system. All these are mentioned in the amendment. Okay, So this price, the advantage of this clear explanation of price trigger is that it will minimize the earlier uncertainties. Earlier there was it was not clear, it was uncertain when the government will impose this stock limit order. Okay. 
Now, by clearly explaining the price trigger for horticultural produce as well as for non-perishable agricultural commodities, it will ensure more transparency and help in better governance of these agricultural marketing or agricultural value chain participation. Participant, okay. So, it will help. It will become now more transparent and help in better governance. Now, if you look, this you can, if it is recorded, you can just mention it, okay. In the last 10 years or so, okay, there have been periods of prolonged application of the Essential Commodities Act. For example, for pulses during, in, during this period, 2006 to 2017 period, pulses was under the Essential Commodities. So, it remained for nearly 11 years. Rice was there in the Essential Commodity list during this period from 2008 to 2014. Edible oil seals was there in the list from 2008 to 2018. So, these were, were imposed, they were brought under this restriction, restrictive law for a longer period and there was no clear uh, proper uh, criteria was not there. But now these things will go because now a proper criteria have been mentioned in the Essential Commodities Amendment Act 2020. So, basically this amendment will remove this uncertainty by defining criteria for the process of imposing stock limit and it will make it more transparent and accountable. Okay. So, that is the features of this Essential Commodities Amendment Act. Now, what the impact of this amendment? I already discussed what the impact it will create or what are the advantage of this Essential Commodities Act. Okay. The most important thing is that it will attract private investment. Okay. It will attract private investment in the value chain of commodities, especially those essential commodities which is removed from the list that is cereals, pulses. In the case of these commodities for cereals, pulses, oil seeds, edible oils, onion and potato, they will attract private investment in their value chain from the production till they are sold in the market that is still the consumer. So, in that value chain private investment will come including storage etc. Okay. So, so, the initial original I already discussed the original aim of this law was to uh, protect the interest of consumer by checking illegal trade practices such as hoarding and black marketing etc. But it has become a big hurdle for investment in the agricultural sector in general as well as post harvesting activities in particular, this has been an issue, but now with removal, that issue have been sorted out. Okay, so more investment will come to a cold chain storage facility for perishable items, and that will help in a reduction of wastage, etc. So this stock limit, so reducing a reduction in the food wastage or agricultural wastage can happen because of this investment in cold storage and other related facility of by mainly due to the amendment okay it will also end harassment of businessmen and traders okay earlier businessmen and traders when there was when this order on stock limit was applied they were harassed so that will ensure ease of doing business for these businessmen and traders in in dealing with those commodities okay it will as i discussed okay it will attract private investment in cold storages warehousing as well as in food processing. It will help reduce wastage as storage facilities will improve. It will also bring price stability. Okay, Price stability, it will bring price stability and raise farm farmers income. So, these are the advantage of these amendment. Now, regarding the criticism, there have been two major criticism. One criticism, the farmer says that the price trigger mentioned the price trigger defined um, uh, in this amendment will be rarely will be used because such a uh, situation arises very rarely. So, this in turn uh, will uh, the government will promote this is actually will result in large corporates to go for hoarding and black marketing and that will result in frequent price hikes. So, this is one of the criticism against uh, that the price trigger definition is it it's, uh, will be rarely used and secondly it will promote again uh, hoarding and black marketing. But to this uh, when you look into the larger picture the advantage this 
essential commodities act will bring in that is it will bring in investment it will bring in not only capital it will bring in technology it will improve the farm productivity it will improve the farmers income it can make india a agricultural food export house okay so by taking all these advantages this issue which the, con uh, the concern right regarding the uh, hoarding or black marketing issue can if there is the, if a proper law mechanism or if a proper law is there or if a proper mechanism has been implemented the issue regarding the hoarding and black marketing can be prevented and to control increasing the price hike that we have many mechanisms the government is doing so that can be managed if there is proper uh, uh, supply mechanism is there one of the reason why we don't have a proper continuous supply of agricultural commodity is mainly because of poor farm productivity and lack of investment so these will be addressed by these laws all the three laws which the government have introduced since so in that way by taking into the picture the larger positive impact these three laws will make to the economy and to the especially to the farming community uh, i already discussed okay again the success of these laws all the three laws including this essential commodities amendment act mainly depend on how well the center and state implement these reforms so there has to be a proper coordination there should be a proper uh, support especially from the central government to the state government to bring in these reforms and definitely these reforms can become the 1991 moment for agriculture where the farmers income as well as it will help them to come out of poverty and this reform can be a step in making india a poverty free country in the future okay so in that way you can conclude and you can impress the examiner